Hey everybody, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego, California. For all things Vespa, whether you have a modern Vespa or a vintage Vespa, like this beautiful 1978 P200, check us out, ScooterWest.com for all your parts needs. So today I'm gonna to talk about this time warp here. And you're wondering why I may call it a time warp? It's a 1978 first year Vespa P200E sold in the United States and it's got some unique differences uh, compared to the later P200Es that were sold in the United States. First of all, it's only got about 3,000 original miles on it. It's got a couple little scratches. It's all original paint and I'm gonna come out with a couple videos following this video on what I would do to a bike of this age, even though it has low mileage, in order to prep it for uh, use on the road. And one thing about a scooter, when it sits forever, uh, things don't work. The brakes are sticking, uh, the clutch sticks, the oil seals have rotted. Same with any other rubber components. We've already replaced the tires. The, one of my technicians replaced the original tires that were on the scooter with new Michelins. Um, but I wanna prep this scooter because we're gonna put it up for sale starting January 2020. And somebody's gonna be very lucky that's gonna have this scooter. Very clean, original P200. So let's jump on to the unique features and quirks of a 1978 P200E that was sold here in North America. So the Vespa P200E was sold in North America for sh four short years, 1978 to 1981. 1981 is when Vespa of America pulled out of North America, mainly because of California. They changed the emissions regulations for two-stroke scooters in California. California is the number one market for two-wheel vehicles, probably still is today in 2019 but unfortunately they can no longer import two strokes that were over 50 cc to California. So Piaggio Group just pulled right out of North America. 1978 is what this scooter is. Uh, it's got some unique characteristics over a European P200E or a PX200E and I'll go over some of those differences along with just the basic features of the P200E scooter. So the Vespa P200E was known to be one of the faster 200cc manual shift vintage Vespas. Very easy to get parts for it because they made them for quite a long time up until just recently. Uh, it's got a nice speedometer that's unique on the P200E. This is in miles per hour. There's no kilometers on it. And most markets didn't have a neutral light, but for the American market, they had a neutral light. I can tell the speedometer's in great condition. The scooter's always been in a garage because that needle is very bright orange. Most of the times they're well faded. The lens is very scratched up. That's typically how I see a P200E or a P125X, which is the smaller uh, sister or brother of this scooter. Pretty much same platform, just smaller engine. Moving on to the controls. If you're unfamiliar with the vintage Vespas, uh, any of the larger CC or sportier models always had a four-speed manual transmission. You'd pull the clutch and you twist the whole grip. This thing is very stiff. It's got the original grease and you could see that right in the lever. That's like the original grease from Italy, circa 1978. Onto the switch gear, a little bit unique for the North American market. It's got high beam, low beam, and the horn, which is typical. Move on to the right side. It's got the turn signals. Uh, they mark an SAE in DOT, that's like the Society of American Engineers and Department of Transportation number that they had to put on it, and the all-important kill switch. In Europe of this, this era, or most of the world, they did not need to put the kill switch, but for the North American market, they need to have the emergency kill switch. Typically, this lever is broken off on older P200Es. They have the two basic indicators, a high beam and a turn signal indicator. The basic ignition switch just turns the ignition on or off. Uh, later years, 1980, 81, they also had a parking like position, so it was a three position switch. Uh, these early 78 and 79s only had two positions. So moving down the steering column, you got the calm lock, which unfortunately I don't have a key and I'll show in a video on how to change that out. Um, it's got the the VIN label that's unique to North America. Many of the scooters don't have this still on here. And this is the federal emissions 
control information label that's also frequently missing. Uh, just kind of states the specifications, the idle speed is something they had to do to import these scooters to North America at the time. The nice thing about the 1978 and early 1979 P200Es, they came with the same carburetor as the European models, which is a 24 millimeter carb. Later years came with a 20 millimeter carb that choked them down. They did that in order to make the scooters run a little cleaner, um, to import them to the United States. Glove box has a lock as they've always had on the P200E. You open it up, kind of like a time warp, the single stage um, blue paint is beautiful looking still. Um, we did polish this on the outside. I had Luis, he's really good with the rubbing compound. And the nice thing about the single stage paint is you can um, take the oxide off it with rubbing compound. It's, it's unlike modern paint jobs that have a clear coat. So it says the original toolkit. Piaggio emblem on there. And I won't take them out, but they got a basic set of tools uh, from everything to change a spark plug to swapping out a tire, uh, almost enough to do a roadside rebuild, as I would say, screwdriver, change out the battery. But they do include some basic tools with the scooter that was original with the scooter and the, the black plastic bag and it goes into spring. And this is a unique find. It's probably not useful today. The original Vespa touch-up paint from the 70s. I'm sure it's dried up. Blue Marine 275 was the color code for this thing, but it is included with the scooter. And I know it's been used because up on the top of the headset, you can see somebody's done some touch-ups. So I don't know if the scooter's fallen over. I suspect it's just had some garage rashes. Pretty much you store something in the garage for 40 years, stuff is gonna fall on it over the years or cars are gonna bump into it. And as you can see on the rear cowls, there's a couple little uh, scratches. For a scooter of this, this condition, I would call that patina. Kind of adds to the character of the scooter. Definitely not worthwhile restoring this scooter at this point because it's in beautiful cosmetic condition considering it's all original. So moving on down to the floorboard, you could see it's got the brake pedal as pretty much all vintage Vespas have. These rubber strips are in great condition along with the, the floor strips. They have the original rivets. Um, they conform to the body very nicely, unlike many of the aftermarket strips that take quite a bit of um, just kind of working them to the sheet metal. So when we do a restoration, it could take several hours just to put a new set of floor strips. Many times I will take the original strips and rework them to the shape and I'd rather use original strips if I'm doing a restoration over the replacement strips. But oftentimes you don't have a choice or they're completely trashed, go with the aftermarket replacement strips. It's got the original floor mat. You can even see some of the glue that's oozing out that they originally attached this with. It's like kind of like rubber cement. Don't want to touch that. That's original put on by the Italians here. Unique for the North American and I think the Australian market is this silly plastic lever. And the fuel tab has very old fuel. If I tried to change the position of this right now, it'd probably break. So I'm not going to touch that. I'm going to take apart the tank and go through the fuel system. The fuel smells pretty bad. I can tell somebody's had it running probably in the last 10 or 15 years, but it certainly hasn't run any time recently. Uh, the famous bag hook in aluminum that's found on most Vespas, even the modern ones. The original seat cover with the grab handle. And let's open that up. A little stiff. It doesn't have the air pump. Sometimes they have the original air pump that's missing from the scooter, uh, but it's in great condition. This little thing's pretty nifty. You don't see these too frequently. You could put um, your registration paper right underneath this. This is the original seat, and remarkably, the foam isn't falling apart. Um, obviously, it was stored in an area where it was cool, never got too hot. Uh, oftentimes, if they're stored outside or the seat cover rots away, this would be crumbling as well. Uh, seat lock is all original, uh, but unfortunately, it doesn't have a key. Moving on to the fuel tank, it's got the oil injection that's found on all the P200Es and P125X models that were sold in North America. Always put that on there for the US market. Gasoline, 
And you can take a peek inside that tank. It doesn't smell good, I can tell you that. But overall, the tank's in really nice shape. I usually run my finger up here and there's no rust coming out. And you can tell the cap's in wonderful shape. There's no rust on here. Oftentimes when these scooters are just left to rot outside for several years, uh, the tank might be too far gone with rust. Um, not worth uh, servicing. So this tank's definitely in really great shape. We'll just clean it out with some lacquer thinner to get some of that varnishy old gas out. Got the original like kind of gold zinc hardware. Moving on to the accessory rack. This rack was unique to the North American market. It was uh, imported uh, or manufactured by Vespa of Chicago. Uh, DASME was the, the acronym for the company. Um, they had all sorts of accessories that were made in the United States uh, for the Vespas, mainly for the 70s and early 80s era Vespas. This rack's pretty neat. You can uh, move the backrest up to be a, a driver backrest if you want. And it still works. Oftentimes these things are so rusted that you can't use this. There is a reproduction of this rack that has the same movable backrest. It's pretty neat. Uh, pretty close reproduction, but this is the original one. So you've got the little pouch. Still says Vespa, and remarkably the zipper still works. I'm afraid to touch that. Still in great shape. You know, even when these are in their best condition, they don't slide all that well, but there's supposed to be a wing nut here. It's got one of the nuts left behind that would tighten that, but there's enough friction that you, you never you need to tighten that, that nut. Uh, got the large rack surface, the nickname barbecue rack. Well, you can see you could probably, um, uh, might be a little too wide to uh, barbecue some burgers, but you can put, a, put a rack of ribs on there if you had enough heat. Uh, the American taillight was made by CEV in Italy. It was used on Moto Guzzi's of the same period. It's a taillight that was certified for use in North America because it's got a reflector on each side and in, in the center and the jewel of the bike, the matching blue California license plate. Looks really cool against this blue Vespa here. So moving on to both the left and the right cowls. The left side cowl removes and there's a spare tire underneath it. As with the P200Es, they don't have a lock for the cowls. They come off like the older Vespas and it reveals a new tire that my technician put on and he's put a new battery on there. Um, haven't really gotten it running at this point. This is still original. There's a voltage regulator, a turn signal flasher. The main fuse for the scooter is also located underneath there. Um, this battery strap's probably new because typically those rot after five or 10 years. Moving on to the center stand. For 1978, they had a smaller center stand. That's a lot weaker. It's a 20 millimeter uh, tubing versus the later ones where they went to 22 millimeter tubing. Um, takes, takes a center stand boot that originally um, just fit these center stands. That's actually a center stand boot for the 70s Vespa, uh, but that's all that fits this, this style. I think the old ones were rotted off, but unique to the 1978, they had a smaller center stand. Frequently missing is the original reflectors. They have a pair of holes that are drilled through the fender with a, a pair of clips that hold on. Very much in the same way the modern Vespas hold the reflectors that they need to add. At this point, it's miraculous it still has both of them. Oftentimes those get knocked and they fall right off. They're plastic. Pretty neat they're still there, even though it's not the prettiest thing to add to the scooter. Another unique characteristic for the North American market, from what I understand, is they added a return spring on the um, front brake. So internally they have a spring and then there's an external spring. This thing is so stiff. We're gonna have to take it all apart and you can watch one of the next videos on how to overhaul and re-grease the front hub of a P200. So moving on to the right cowl, pretty much just pull the lever and you kind of lift up and pull the cowl right off. There's the engine in all its glory. Uh, we've already replaced the, um, the intake rubber bellow, but you can see this line is like a rock. Hurts my nail even flicking at it. But these cables are all original. This Bosch spark plug cap is all original. 
Everything underneath here is original, including some undesirable parts that have probably deteriorated from the age, such as the oil seals and wiring on the stator. Uh, this is the ignition box that was original to the scooter. It probably still works fine, but if we're going to put the scooter back in service, I'd probably put a brand new ignition box because oftentimes these electronic boxes, now that they're over 40 years old, they're prone to failure or nearly you know, over 40 years old at this point with in this, this scooter, regardless of the mileage. It's just electronic components. The capacitors have um, deteriorated, so they don't make a strong spark. Uh, moisture has gotten to them. And moving on to the back, if you're ever wondering where the serial number for the, the frame number on a Vespa, P200E, this is where it's located. Pretty hard to read, but it's stamped into the frame. So let me summarize what I'm gonna do to this scooter in order to prepare it for sale. Well, first of all, we've cleaned it up and put new tires on it. That's something that's pretty logical. Anytime the tires are over 10 years old, I just recommend starting with fresh tires. Don't really wanna ride on ancient tires. Um, I'm gonna take apart the whole headset, grease all these lever pivots, the shift tube, probably uh, spray grease down the original cables. The original cables are still gonna be in great shape uh, and usable. I'm gonna put probably a new ignition switch. There's a green wire that runs from the ignition switch, the kill switch, and to the ignition CDI box. Uh, that's probably completely deteriorated even though this scooter has no miles have been stored inside. Uh, for some reason, the silicon insulation they used on the, in, the, the wire of that period tends to rot away. The rest of the wires in the wiring harness are typically in good shape, especially considering it's low miles and there's not worn out wires from the movement of steering. The steering sweep is really nice. I may lubricate the, the upper bearing, but there's no problem all with that. Uh, the wheel bearings, probably take those apart. It feels smooth, but the brake is completely useless and stiff. So I'll take apart the hub, replace the brakes. I'm gonna replace the steering column lock, the glove box lock, possibly the seat lock. Uh, moving on to the rear brake pedal. It feels pretty good. Sometimes if they are left out, the pivot pin may be rusted. It'd be advisable to take apart the brake pedal. I think in our multi-part series that Steve and I did on the full restoration of the P200, uh, we covered overhauling the pedal. Moving on to the engine. I'm gonna pull the engine apart. I'm gonna leave it inside the frame because the motor's in really nice shape. You don't necessarily need to remove it like as we did in that full restoration engine overhaul video that we've done several years ago. I'm just gonna pop the motor apart, put new oil seals, new clutch plates, possibly new rings, just give it a quick inspection, new gearbox oil, and I'm sure the motor would be perfect and ready to go. I'm gonna overhaul the carburetor with new gaskets, same with the oil pump, a new oil line and fuel line. I'm gonna clean the fuel tank out and hopefully I'll be able to rebuild the fuel tap on the scooter so I can use that original plastic American style fuel tap. Oftentimes people just get rid of those and put the European style fuel tap. We do sell a kit that replaces that. So if you're missing that, that original fuel tap, it's oftentimes just worthwhile replacing it because the European style functions much better and is a simpler design. But since this scooter is all original, I want to try to keep as much original parts on it as I can. And that pretty much kind of sums up what I'm gonna to do to it. Obviously take it on a good test ride or joy ride as I like nice original bikes like this. And after that's all done, hopefully videotape all those different uh, repair pair processes that I'm gonna go through to prep this scooter for sale. We'll have it up for sale. And if you're interested in the scooter, you can give the sales guys a call. Their phone number is 619-280-1718 and they're at extension 604 in sales. And they can give you details on when this will be available and the price. Um, if you're calling too late, I'm sorry. We do get vintage bikes time to time, but this one's quite the gem here. So there's my intro to this beautiful P200. Um, check out all the videos to follow. If you're looking to restore one yourself or tips on what I would do with an old scooter, regardless of the mileage, just to get it back on the road, kind of gives you a good idea. It'll be a multi-part video. You know, I'll do a separate part for fixing the wiring, 
one for the fuel system and carburetor, very similar to the, the video I did about six months ago on the genuine Stella scooter, um, the engine overhaul, and so on. If you're stumbling across this channel for the first time, subscribe to our channel. We're over 60,000 subscribers. I'm trying to get 100,000, one of the largest Vespa channels on the YouTube universe. If you want to be updated on the videos, typically I shoot on every Thursday. We'll maybe shoot two or four videos and we'll publish them throughout the week. You can hit the little bell and it'll give you a reminder on when new videos come out. Search our archive, there's over 500 videos. This is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport, scooterwest.com. Until next time, Robot here.